So it's, uh, it's January now, um, we've had the site closed for a couple of weeks over Christmas, uh, but there's still a lot happened uh, since we last gave everyone an update. In particular around this area of the site, you can see we're now starting to dig in some of the drainage, uh, some of the services that will be supplying the, the buildings around here. In particular there's a drainage route that goes under the tram lines, uh, we've already had to bore under the tram lines and that's to avoid us having any kind of disruption to what we're doing on a day to day basis under the road as well. And this is so the drainage from the site, the, the foul water drainage can just connect into our treatment plant on site uh, behind the existing town. And the other pipes, uh, electrical supplies, gas and so on, are all being dug in at the moment. And this is one of the phases of, of sort of building and groundworks. There's a bit odd to watch as uh, someone who's not an expert in construction. Uh, you get to a stage where it looks like very little is actually happening. Uh, and of course there is as much if not more going on uh, than when they were just levelling the site and, and sort of putting down these, uh, these stone layers. Um, and you get strange optical illusions on the site as, as areas are cleared. It actually makes the site seem smaller sometimes or bigger and uh, so it's, it's interesting to watch and, and see it developing. Uh, we're still a very busy site and we're still hoping to wrap up this phase of works by the end of March. So this area of site has developed from, uh, from when we uh, last came in. This is in the sort of medium term going to be a storage area so we can bring building materials in, have them close to the site and then distribute them onto whichever plot we're working on. And then in the longer term, this is going to be a sort of recreation area, a little park that people can come and just have their picnics or sit and enjoy the views around Beamish. So we've tried to keep some of the trees around here, try and make sure this area of the site does feel a bit more developed. Uh, across a lot of the site we've had to take the trees out. We will replant, we'll make sure that the area is green, it's, uh, it's going to look really good in the long term, but in the short term, We've done our best to keep as many of these trees as we can just to keep that sort of feeling of it being an area that's been lived in rather than a totally brand new development. So this is the foundation for the uh, community centre that's going to be one of the first buildings we open as part of the 50s site, hopefully later this year. Uh, we've opened up the, uh, the bund on the side of the site here, so we've got a separate access route into this building and we can sort of fence this area off, keep this as a self-contained building site. And we've had Seymour's put in the foundations here uh, so that we can get started as soon as they're able to hand over this section of the site. Uh, that we're really ready to go, we've got um, a tender out at the moment for the wooden frame. And it's a fascinating little building, it's, uh, it's all timber, it's got these glue lamb arches which is a technique where you stick lots of bits of wood together uh, to provide the, uh, the main sort of structure of the building. And then it's, uh, it's sort of panelled from the outside. Um, a lot of that work will, uh, will take place in house which will be explained more by one of my colleagues in the joinery team, uh, but the main frame will be brought in by an external contractor and we're hoping that that will go up really very quickly. Um, our structural engineers described it as being a bit like a sort of traditional barn raising uh, where you see it go up uh, literally as you're, as you're watching. And, and these foundations are the first step of that so it's great to see the, uh, the sort of footprint of the building appearing. I'm Sean Kerr, I'm the joinery team leader on the Remake and Beamish Buildings team. Uh, today we're actually moulding timber for the sashes for Lee Home and Cowden Community Centre. Uh, it's a building that's still standing in Lee Home. It was built in 1957 as a miners welfare hall and a community centre. Uh, the windows that, that you see here are copies of the original windows that were in the building reproduced by ourselves. They've got Iroko sills, hardwood sills, and the rest is in redwood. Um, we've been on with the windows now for approximately six weeks. Uh, we've got another couple of weeks left. Once we've completed all of the windows, we'll be moving on to making the doors for the community centre. Uh, by that time, hopefully, the building will be ready to go up. It's glue lamb arches and a timber frame around the building. Then we'll be moving down site to start fitting the windows and cladding the whole building in large. 
So here we're just next to the site for Spainsfield Farm, uh, which is going to be started later on this year, hopefully uh, in the next sort of five, six months uh, at, the, at the most. Uh, so this sits very nicely in the middle of the site. Uh, I think we spoke last time about this road, uh, which connects the, uh, the site across the middle, connects us to Spainsfield here. Uh, but we've tried very hard to just keep the road out of vision so that the, you know, the field is sort of uh, attractive from the other side, from the, uh, the pit village there. Uh, the work we've been doing along here as well as finishing this road is bringing drainage across here so uh, there's you know, all that infrastructure is going in and, and that allows us to start work on Spainsfield very soon. And you can see just around the edge of the field here uh, bags of stone and this is Spainsfield Farm. It's the stone that's been taken down, transported over from Weardale and that's really ready for our stonemasonry team to, to start unpacking, relaying on the site of Spainsfield Farm once they're finished with Joe the Quilters. And I think my colleague Paul's going to explain a bit about how they're getting on down there. Good morning, here we are in, in 2018, the middle, middle of January, and yet again, unfortunately, we're held up with the, well, uh, the cold conditions. As you know, with lime, we're not allowed to use it. Three degrees and rising is when we're supposed to be using it. And at the moment, we're minus one this morning and it has been kind of like this for the last month or so. So the job's been held up, but it has been pushed on at the same time. Um, as you can see now, we've got the scaffold up. So we've got the first lift on. What we'll be looking to do now is take the front and the back of the building about two foot above the frames, what you've got down there. That's it finished there. Next week, uh, Tony and uh, Sean and the lads are, are putting the crook frame on, which will have a nice big long beam along the top which will give me something to build to. I then build the peaks, um, and then that's the job done. Yet again, though, uh, it's the conditions that are gonna rule, rule the waves. So um, we work to those, and hopefully middle of next year, or sorry, middle of this year, we should have a new uh, building to look around. Um, we're currently splitting the wood that we got from Northumberland. I think it was 23 tonnes delivered. So one Arctic lorry's worth. So you start by splitting the oak. Um, it's then got lots of, it's all stringy and attached together. So we ax that up or use the adz just to clean it up. So we have a rough surface, um, which is the finished surface. It's still relatively rough. And then debark it. And then that is the finished timber ready to uh, make into the right shape. So this is one we split earlier today. Um, we're just taking the bark off with our bark scraper and it through a nice big knot. It comes off relatively easy whilst the tree is still green. Um, but anything that's left will just fall off over time anyway as it dries out. And then it'll leave us with a surface similar to this. So this is the sort of finished surface we're looking for. So it's still fairly rough and you can still see a few tool marks in it, but it's uh, close enough for the roof of a, an old cottage.
inches. Get on, Davy. Thank <laughs> you.